Joe, you need a, you need a, back there. I've never seen this before. Oh, you went to the, the go to the city website. Yeah, that's the best way to go. Yeah, that's what I do. Don't go up there. Yeah. No. That's because he didn't like what I said about not contacting the players. In my opinion. He, 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 he got it's weird. Some of them are through the email, and some of them, like, finance isn't a board doc, you know. So. Whatever they want, so then he figured he had to have something. Uh, I don't understand. The last email sent to you. Yeah. Let me start. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, attending our second uh, college course of fund balances. Uh, I'll entertain any questions as we go along, so if you have one, just raise your hand and I'll call on. Fund accounting. Why do we do this? It's an accounting system that really emphasizes on accountability rather than profitability, as you know. Uh, public entities aren't for profit. Why fund accounting? It actually segregates the resources that we use. It categorizes them for specific purposes, and it requires unique identification and reporting, as you'll see as we go on with all the funds that we do have. <coughs> Types of funds we have in the city are the general fund, which we're all familiar with, uh, special revenue funds, capital project funds, debt service, permanent funds, proprietary funds, which consist of enterprise funds and internal service funds. Just uh, there's nothing on here on permanent funds, but permanent funds there are two in the city one is the cemetery care fund um, And the other is the library trust fund uh, Cemetery care fund really is for people that uh, buy cemetery plots the money goes in there and they pay a stipend to Public works for the care and maintenance of the cemetery and the library trust fund <coughs> basically takes uh, donations or contributions uh, for the sake of the library that can be designated for certain purposes within the library. The uh, general fund is our primary operating fund, as you all know. Resources will be expended in the current year will also be used for operating purposes to run the city. The next slide graphically shows where the revenue comes from the general fund. As you can see, our tax base from the levy is 46%. Intergovernmental is 42 and a half. Public charges for services is 6.3, licenses and permits, fines and forfeitures, and there's a small percentage of miscellaneous. Jim? So, yes. On the intergovernmental, is that just state funding? Or? Yes. Okay. So you can see that roughly 49%, <coughs> I'm sorry, 89% of our uh, revenue comes from two sources, our local taxes and all the intergovernmental payments that we get. Taxes are roughly $15.6 million. And again, this is based on 2012 numbers, just to put some numbers to these percentages. Intergovernmental is 14,400,000. Uh, Licenses and permits are about 900,000. Fines and forfeitures, roughly 300. Public charges for services are about 2.1. And there's about a half million dollars, <coughs> excuse me, of miscellaneous. General fund expenses. Again, we've gone through all of these through the budget process. All of you who are on committees sat through these individually. Uh, fire is 22%. Public works is 28% of our budget. Police is 36%. Admin is 12 And development and building inspection is 2 I'm sorry, I just had a yes, question on the, on the other slide. The intergovernmental. Is that, does the city ever receive direct funding from the federal government, or is it always through the state? It's always through the state. The only, I think, Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, federal money we get is for transit. CDBG? And CDBG. And Jim, what was the, I'm, I'm sorry, I was writing, um, the uh, actual dollars in the tax line, the 46.1%? Um, local taxes are 15.6 million. 15.6, thank you. In, in general fund expenses, police is about 11.6 million, fire 7.2, <coughs> public works is 9.2, and administration is 3.8. Special revenue funds, you can see we have a number of community development block grants all the way down to stormwater. Special revenue funds 
allow for the ability to segregate revenues and expenses for specific purposes other than debt service or capital projects. And these are all internal to the city, these types of funds. Sources of revenue for special revenue funds, intergovernmental are 20 percent, taxes are 34, public charges for services are 21, fines and forfeitures are 10, licenses and pits, permits are 5, and we have special assessments that represent 3 percent of those. From a tax perspective, what's all included in that is really Mead Library, which we pay about $2.4 million to a year out of tax levy, and also tourism. Um, which is about $1.2 million. Special revenue fund expense. Um, we've got the library, which is represents 40% of special revenue funds, city development 25%, debt service is 1%, public works 11, cable TV is 2, admin is 7, police is 1, and fire is 6. <coughs> For city development, um, there's uh, roughly Jim, about. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, just to slow you down for a sec. Um, the, so the, the when we look at all these special revenue funds, what you're saying then is the largest fund by far is the library. Right. Does the library get any general fund money? Yes. Or it all comes from well, the special. Well, they get they get it through tax levy. Okay. They get $2.4 million. Okay. When you look at the special revenue fund in the library's 40% of it, they have a budget of three, in, in 2012, they had a, a budget of roughly $3.2 million, and that's what that 40% represents. Now, that's not only the city's piece, but it's also the county and some of the other municipalities that share. So if, if, if it's part of the regular tax levy, why is it in a special revenue fund? I'm sorry. Because the money comes from the tax levy to the special revenue fund, which the library sits in. Okay. The library so is it's a just that, I mean, fund. so it's just that's the way it's been developed over time? Correct. Okay. Is that the same for many of these special funds? Yes. Okay, but not all of them. Like no, no. Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> like, city development is made up of <clears throat> loans, which are CDBG-led program as well as fund balance where we collect payments uh, from individuals that have loans and we replenish the loan balance and we loan out more money at the CDBG. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't mean to go farther back, but under the general uh, fund revenues, where would the, uh, the fee be in here on, on this portion where you've got public service charges, intermental, intergovernmental uh, taxes? It would be, it'd be public charges for service. Public charges for service. Any questions on that? So when you're saying expense, that's just where the money goes. Correct. In, there's, a, in other there's words. A, a special revenue fund has a stream of revenue that's either internal or external, and expenses in there to run that fund. Uh, an example would be, uh, let's take the ambulance fund. Um, ambulance fund collects revenue for services. That goes into the special revenue fund, and then we charge expenses to operate the ambulance <coughs> service okay. that go into that fund. Got it. Same thing with municipal court. Mm -hmm. We collect revenues from tickets, and we also have expenses for the judge and her staff. And the net of that, which is normally revenue left over, gets contributed <coughs> to the general fund. Okay. Capital project funds are made up of two. Mm, There's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just curious if so. I see this is a big chunk for the library. Does, if the library has fines and overdue books, and where does that money go? They collect that. They budget it. They get to keep that money? Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Yeah, because their total budget's $3.2 million, and we give them two point four. So they've got to generate $800,000 of revenue from other sources. Okay. I think the, um, the county contributes about 400000 of that eight. Um, based on people that use the library outside of the city. There are other municipalities that share in some of the cost as well. Does that answer your question? Kind of, yep. I'll 
try better. No, that's okay. Do the, do the county and the other areas that use the library, do they have a portion of the library set in their budget? That they yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Capital project fund. There's capital projects for TIF districts and there's capital projects that are bonded or, or as we refer to, refer to in council meetings as go debt, which is general obligation. General what, I'm sorry? General obligation debt. Capital projects fund, funds account for financial resources used to acquire or construct assets or infrastructure and we go through that all the time when we're looking at buying stuff or building stuff. Uh, it comes before the council, council blesses it and we go out and spend capital. We're in the process of uh, borrowing two and a half million dollars for next year for capital projects. Uh, there are uh, probably 30 million dollars worth of projects that the city would like to do and we're borrowing two and a half million so we go through the process of narrowing it down and depending on what projects offer the most benefit to the city and the citizens are the ones that we do. And those are really fall into this category which are capital projects. So as they start we expend funds when they're closed. Uh, we put it into debt service and we start paying principal and interest on it as well. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jim. The we in that statement was you and department heads or who, who makes the decision of what? Cap the Capital Appropriations Committee. Okay. Okay. Capital improvements will make a recommendation and council will make the Capital project fund revenue, it's either we're out borrowing money or we're receiving grants uh, for certain projects. And the expense side is really the infrastructure or things that we are building or the capital assets that we are buying. Again, on the debt service fund side, we have the general obligation debt, and the TID debt. And the debt service fund is really used to account for, pay, for repaying principal and interest on the money that we borrow throughout the years. <clears throat> Historically, um, we have some loans that stretched out to 20 years. Uh, our current uh, line of thinking is 10 years or less on, uh, on debt. And again, that's a function of what our debt service fund has for allocation of the tax levy, because if you recall, when we go through the tax levy of the $15 million, we allocate so much to the general fund, so much to debt service, so much to the library, and so much to transit. And we try to keep that debt service fund neutral each year so that as debt gets retired or payments <coughs> diminish, uh, we go out and borrow new debt to keep it at that same level. We have the ability under the Walker Act <coughs> that if we do incur more <coughs> debt, we can pass it on in the form of a tax increase. <coughs> That's one of the things that this bill allows. So we could borrow more money if we had to and pass it on, pass it on in the form of a tax increase rather than burden the general fund uh, with coming up with cost reductions to make up the difference if, that's, if the council so chooses to do that. Jim, isn't that limited? Isn't there a cap on that? Not on debt. Okay. There is on increasing the levy for operational costs. Okay. So the normal percentage on the, on the debt, um, uh, that one percent is that common? Is, is it always a, other communities our size? One percent of their money is to the debt service, or is, do they other communities our size would have more than that or less? Well, than we're that? really t we're, from a debt service standpoint, we really paid about ten percent, Nance. I think our our debt service is about three million dollars, or thereabouts, from the uh, levy. And our, you know, um, so it's not it's not one percent. Oh, okay. And that's just for the principal piece, correct? Is that principal and interest? Okay. The next page shows you, and again, here's the number. I said roughly $3 million. It's $2.9 million, which comes out of the tax <coughs> levy to pay the uh, debt service fund. Uh, the TIF pays $4.3 million, or actually collects $4.3 million in TIF revenues. Um, there's miscellaneous transfers. There's miscellaneous and transfers that go into debt service fund revenues. Um, and again, um, those are things that come from 
uh, special assessment funds. We also last year closed out uh, TID 3, which actually got some money into the debt service fund because there was a payout at the end because we had excess revenues in that fund. And there's about $600,000 of, uh, of other debt uh, for convention center that gets, that's included in there as well. From an expense side, uh, interest and principal payments total about $9 million. Uh, interest <coughs> is 2.6. Principal is about 6.5. There's small state administrative expenses that we have, not, not worth mentioning. There's TIF incentives that we've paid. Uh, as you know, in our TIFs, we've gone to a pay-as-you-go rather than borrowing money up front to incent developers to put up buildings so that uh, on a pay-as-you-go, we've been paying about, uh, we've got two that we put in place uh, in the last couple of years. One was for pick and save and the other one was for festival foods. So that every year, based on the tax increment that's developed in that TIF district, we pay roughly 95% of that back to the developer as his incentive. We guarantee a certain amount, and that certain amount is based on the increment he is going to put into that investment, uh, and based on that, we pay it out over 10 or 11 years. Enterprise funds. Um, we've got wastewater, the water utility, transit, parking, and the boat facility. The difference between special revenue funds and enterprise funds is enterprise funds are really where there's a fee charged that it's their primary <coughs> customers are outside of the general government, such as wastewater or the water utility. Uh, you all receive bills for them, and that's really a third-party bill. It's not a bill that's with inside, inside the city. You can see the revenues, 81 percent are charges for services. I'll get your water and utility bills, and that's the primary driver there. There's a small piece of intergovernmental, small piece of property taxes, uh, investment income, which uh, in the past four or five years has been ne negligible, and a small amount of miscellaneous. <coughs> Enterprise fund expense. Again, we've got administrative services, contracted services, which both utilities use, supplies, depreciation interest expense and insurance. Internal service funds. Um, uh, Jim, could you just back up for a sec on administrative services? The city pays those expenses from the enterprise fund? Yes. Okay. And that would... For the people that are employed in wastewater or the people that so are... So it just kind of charge that back? They develop rates uh, that need to be blessed uh, by council, uh, and based on those rates, it funds themselves for their operational costs. And then the contracted services would be? Third-party services to support that. Okay. All right. And the depreciation is, I would say, not a real number. I know that's not true, but... Um, well, it's, it's based on their assets. Um, you know, okay. we depreciate assets over a life. Uh, again, these are really entities that are for profit, if you will, uh, not like the city. So depreciation is taken too into account okay. in this, just as any other normal private business would. It's a, no, it's a non cash item, so there's not a cash outlay for it. Uh, internal service funds, we've talked about this in council meetings, whether it be motor vehicle, data processing, health, workers' comp, and general liability, self-insurance. These are activities for which a fee is charged, and the primary customers are, again, are internal uh, divisions or offices of the government. And you can see here that 98 percent of the revenue is generated from charges for services. So, for example, um, <clears throat> health fund, uh, we estimate the cost of health insurance on a single person to be $737 a month. The general fund pays to the health fund $737 a month for each single employee. <coughs> that comes in as revenue for the internal service fund. It's an expense to the general fund. And then out of the internal service <coughs> fund, we pay all of the claims for health insurance. So that's the, the other side of it. 
If you look at the, the expenses, you can see insurance payout is basically 64% of that fund. Administrative services are 13. Contracted services are 10. Most depreciation and supplies. Contracted services, administrative services are fees that we pay to third party administrators for our claims, whether it be health or for uh, workers' compensation. Insurance, you know, to put a dollar value on it is about $6.2 million a year. The administrative services are about one3 and contracted services are about a million dollars. It's internal service funds. Fund balance. Definition between is the difference between revenues and expenses is the fund balance. So um, <clears throat> the more revenue you have and the less expense you have fund balance. Fund balance is there to be used for specific for purposes. As in the general fund, we've designated a piece um, to be um, undesignated minimum balance. Uh, when we look at city, um, when it comes to things that we can't foresee, we have fund balance in order to cover some of those things if the council so chooses, whether it's a natural catastrophe or whatever it might be. The minimum general fund balance uh, was put into effect last year under resolution 46-12-13, which basically stated that 25 percent of the ensuing year's expenditures would be set aside for a minimum fund balance in the general fund. The next page goes through a calculation on where we ended up in 2012, oh, I'm sorry, 2014. We have budgeted expenditures of 35.5 million. 25% of the policy balance would be $8.879 million. That is what we would look to have as a minimum fund balance in the general fund. <clears throat> Anything above that, the council at its discretion can allocate to uh, several different types of activities. Anything below that, there wouldn't be any allocation uh, for the council to uh, consider. I just wanted to <clears throat> make a comment on this because some people will look at this number and say, well, that's a pretty big number. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is when we bond, um, our bond rating is, is um, reliant upon that fund balance because a lot of the factors that go into our, our Moody's rating or AM Best or S&P, whichever one we're using today, um, we don't have a lot of those factors like median household income and a lot of those other great factors that they want to see. So our minimum fund balance really helps us keep our A rating um, with the rating agency. So, you know, you're looking at that and say, wow, that seems, you know, pretty high. It's almost out of necessity because the other factors that go into that bond rating just aren't there. Um, and that would say, you know, the difference between an A and a B rate or triple B rating, um, what are we, A plus now? Double A2. Double A2. You know, you know, the difference between just dropping down in interest expense is pretty significant. You know, 10%, I think, is what we were told. So that's a pretty significant dollar amount. So. Jim, um, how much trouble in a generally normal year would we have uh, in terms of, I mean, this is not 8.8 .8 million that we have to come up with every year. No, it there's a, a fund balance that's there. It keeps going. Um, and generally, say in the last two or three years, have we kind of met this target? The target before last year was 18 percent, and I think the, five, the four or five prior years never met the 18 percent rule. Okay. Um, in the last three years, we've added to the general fund balance. Okay. So, so in, in past years, we've had trouble even at 18 percent. Correct. And now we're shooting for 25. And we met 25 in 2012, okay. at the end of the year. And we exceeded it by $1.2 million, which the council has uh, at its discretion to spend on certain types of activities. And that was in the ordinance, as I remember. Correct. How oh, the extra could be expended. Correct. OK. Thank you. And was, was our bond rating negatively affected in those years because we weren't at the 18, and then we certainly weren't near the 25. No, uh, the, uh, I'm going to get into what affects the bond rating. That's next, and <coughs> we'll go through it so I can point out some things that were then and what's happened as of today. Okay. 
largest factors that affect bond rating are really demographics. When you look at the economy, the, the median family income, market value per capita, the unemployment rate, and the growth rate within the city. Um, they also look at uh, population if population increases or decreases as well as a major factor. From a financing standpoint, they look at fund balance as a percent of expenditures. And these are new. They've been revised this year uh, by Moody's and S&P. Um, when they look at fund balance now, fund balance represents 25% of the total weighting. Uh, a significant portion of the weighting is really on the economy, finances, as well as management uh, of the city. So when they look at finances, they're looking at fund balance as a percent of expenditures, actual to budget fund performance, do we do better or worse and why, cash balances as a percent of expenditures and as a percent of debt service. From a management side, um, there's operating history, what we've done in the past, revenue and expense assumptions for the city, budget amendments and updates, long-term financial planning, and long-term capital planning, which are really significant in, in how rating agencies look at the, at the city and give us a bond rating. They also look at debt and contingent liabilities. Um, you'll hear some terms that get thrown around like uh, direct debt as a percent of uh, governmental funds. And I've got a slide, uh, it's the last slide that'll show our direct debt and our overlapping debt, and I'll explain what those both are. Um, you can see here that we take our full value of debt, which is 44 million divided by our equalized value. Uh, and that's one calculation for direct debt. And our equalized value, that's $2.476 billion of e equalized or market value for our city. So it says our direct debt is 1.8 percent, or 1.8 to 1, which is okay. It's not great. I'd like to see it under 1.2, but well, we're not bad at 1.8. Bond ratings play a major role in the marketing of a bond issue, and that's, that's pretty self-explanatory because um, it, the better our rating, the better it is and easier it is to market, and the more favorable rates we get. It affects uh, overall interest rates that we ultimately pay over the life of the bond, and creditors and potential uh, investors of governments seek information about the abil ability and willingness of a government to levy taxes and generate revenues to cover that principal and interest on those bonds. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just going back to the, the previous slide real quick. Sure. So the 1.8%, the you said you'd prefer to have it closer to 1.2? If I had my druthers, yeah. And yet we're going to be borrowing another $2 million for capital improvement. So what is that going to do to that 1.8% then? Well, it'll, it'll, it'll ultimately drop because theoretically we're going to borrow two and a half million, but really our debt service will come down further than that. Okay. This last slide is uh, pretty telling. Uh, you can't see it up there because it's pretty small, but you've got copies of it. Um, <coughs> we just took a sample of cities close to our size and looked at their ratings from a double A, which is Wauwatosa. Uh, there's an A1, which is Eau Claire, and then we've got a bunch of A2s, which are Fond du Lac, La Crosse, Oak Creek, Sheboygan, Wausau, and West <coughs> Dallas. Uh, it's got the population size of each um, municipality. Now you look at direct debt outstanding. If you look at Sheboygan, that's our 44 million, but you can see others uh, have a little more uh, or considerably more, and there's only one that has less, which is Oak Creek at about $23 million of direct debt. <clears throat> Overall debt, you can see that Sheboygan has 87 or, or close to $88 million. And that takes all of the taxing entities in our jurisdiction, which is the county and the school systems. So it takes their debt as well. <clears throat> and we, there's a calculation that's done for the direct debt, which in our case was 1.8. And if you go over a column, uh, our overlapping debt or debt burden on full value is 3.6. So you can see that the city on its own is 1.8 and the overlapping debt from other taxing entities 
uh, which are the school systems in the county. We're at 3.6 percent. Now, when you look at some of the other entities like Wauwatosa, double A rating, you can see that their direct debt is 1.1 percent, and that's really a large driver. When you get into the overlapping debt, there are things that really are out of your control as, as a municipality. Uh, you have school systems that drive it, county that drives it as well. Uh, from a direct net debt per capita, we're at $914, um, which isn't bad. Um, it's uh, probably third lowest on that group. Oak Creek and West Allis um, are slightly ahead of us, but we're not in bad shape. Uh, unrestricted, unrestricted spendable fund balance. And again, this is different than the 25% only because, because it takes the entire general fund balance. Uh, and some of that, as we know, is restricted for working capital and other things uh, for the, subs, uh, for the uh, uh, upcoming year. So we're at 42.4%, which is uh, pretty good compared to some. The only one that's better than us is West Allis at 47%. Jim? Yes. Boy, I just didn't get that. Okay, so just to back up, unrestricted spendable fund balance is what? It's our total general fund balance okay. that we have. Total, not what we call undesignated, the 25% piece. That makes up 25 of the 42%. Okay. We have other categories of funds in the general fund that enter into this calculation. Okay, and that would be like the motor vehicle fund? No, no, no. Oh. It's, it's other things like we have uh, working capital, uh, which is roughly $4 million that we set aside so that we can fund ourselves in between, you know, tax cycles. Okay. Um, and we have a few other things on the balance sheet as well. Okay. And so in, the, in this column... So higher is better? To a certain point. Um, I mean, if you look at uh, Wauwatosa, again, they've got 40%, not 42. If you look at Wausau, they've got 24%, not 42. So again, it's really not as heavily weighted as it used to be on unrestricted spendable funds from a rating agency standpoint. What really tells the story here is the full value of these taxing entities. So if you look at Wauwatosa, they've got close to $5 billion of market value <coughs> in the community, where Sheboygan has $2.5 million in their community. You can see that we've shrunk again um, year over year. Uh, we've shrunk 2.6% on market value. Wauwatosa has taken a hit of 3%. You can see some other communities have had small growth. But it's really the tax base that you have in your municipality that really drives this. So that you could have a little more debt, uh, you could have a little less capital in reserve, but as long as you've got the tax base, when they look at it, they feel safe because there's enough tax base to generate taxes to run th that municipality. And that's the equalized value. And that's when we talk about our equalized value compared to assessed value. Our assessed value has stayed pretty constant, but our equalized has, in the last seven years, dropped 14%. So that's basically said, okay, we've got to revalue the city to put both of those back in line. Any other questions? Um, I would... <clears throat> I know that we've had some <clears throat> controversy about fund balances in some of the, and I, <clears throat> excuse me, um, those included things like, I remember we, we, and it would seem now that that's part of the general fund balance, but we talked about the motor vehicle fund balance and the health that's and- a, That's a separate balance. That's a separate fund with a separate balance. Okay, and the workers' comp fund balance and the, health fund. and the health fund balance. Could you just comment on, first of all, what those are, and then second, how they get funded, and third, what you see in terms of trends or sure. problems? Well, the health fund and the workers' comp fund get funded from the general fund. Uh, it's an expense in the general fund that it gets, trans oh, I'm sorry, it gets transferred to the um, internal service funds. 
and those internal service funds, depending on where claims come out, whether it be workers' comp or whether it be um, health-related cl claims, um, with the m amount of money that's transferred from the general <coughs> fund and other funds that have people in it as well, um, either has a surplus or a deficit. Historically, um, other than the last four years, we had deficit, deficits in the health fund and deficits in the workers' comp fund. And even through last year, we had a deficit in the workers' comp fund. We have since brought both of those in line based on recommendations um, from our insurance carriers that we should carry roughly a $3 million balance in our health fund as reserved and a $1.5 million balance in our uh, <coughs> workers' comp fund. I think we ended up 12, <coughs> roughly $2.9 million in health fund about 100000 off and at roughly a million and a half dollars in workers' comp. So we're good there. When we look at um, Motor Vehicle Fund, uh, Motor Vehicle Fund again gets funded from the general fund, an expense to the general fund for the vehicles that it uses from the Motor Vehicle Fund. <coughs> motor Vehicle Fund, and we've talked about this, has had significant reserve balances and they've been dwindled over the years. We currently have roughly a $2 million fund balance in that fund going into 13. Um, I've just gone through some expenditures that Public Works wants to make for, I think it's three triple axle dump trucks uh, and a couple other vehicles uh, that'll probably <coughs> eat six, seven hundred thousand dollars of that two million. The, <coughs> the fund itself, other than that, has enough money to cover the operating expenses, which is basically <coughs> repair and maintenance on the vehicles, the cost of parts, and gas. So that, that that fund will never be able to build a surplus to replace vehicles other than now going out and have, having to borrow debt. So um, that's when I said through the budget process that it looks like in 15, based on the minimum commitments we need for the motor vehicle fund to buy equipment, that we'll probably have to fund for the first time in a long time vehicles to support public works through general obligation debt that we would borrow every year. And that would put pressure on that two and a half million dollars we're gonna borrow for next year. That's for things other than motor vehicle pool. So going forward, we either have the opportunity to try to condense that and say, okay, part of that's for vehicles. The other part is for other stuff we wanna do in the city. Or the council can make the decision to say, we need to go out and borrow more money, uh, not only to cover general fund um, projects, but as well as motor vehicle replacement vehicles. And how about police and fire? It's my memory, such as it is. Um, there are there is a line item in the police budget for replacement of at least some squad cars this coming year. Correct. Okay. There used to be that same line item in the fire department. Um, Due to budget constraints, that was cut out a few years ago. And what they did is they put in 100 to 50 to 250,000 a year uh, so that at the end of two or three years, they had enough money set aside to buy a new vehicle, uh, a fire vehicle. Does that go into the motor vehicle? No. So, oh, so it's separate. A, it's so, okay. uh, there's a request in now, I think, with some of the surplus funds we have uh, to buy a fire pumper truck, which is roughly. $400,000, which we need because of its age, it's 15 years old, and should be put out of service. So that's something that the council will have to deal with as well. It's on the, it's uh, under review for a capital appropriations committee, as well as um, the surplus funds we have left over from 12, the $1.2 million. Does that answer your question? It does. So just overall, with these other separate fund balances, your estimation is that we're generally in, in the ballpark in pretty decent shape? Yes. And do those separate fund balances affect the bond rating or is it because they're within the general fund balance? They're outside the general fund balance. They look at all of the fund balances, but they primarily are driven on the general fund. Okay. Okay. Got it. Any other questions? When I'm looking at the enterprise fund expense and a couple of the other ones that say miscellaneous, like 3%, mm -hmm. 
Can you tell me what the miscellaneous are? You know, I always one that asked that question. I might have that. No, I don't. Nancy. <coughs> what's, do you know what's made up in the uh, yes. enterprise fund miscellaneous expense categories? Some of the pies, there's always miscellaneous in a percentage, but I don't know what the miscellaneous is. That, oh, that roughly represents about 480000 of $16 million in the, in the enterprise funds. I can certainly get you a list of all of what they are. I don't have <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, that's really loan balances, CDBG and lead that are in there, CBG and, oh, okay. and lead grant. And there's also a fund balance in there as well, which is people repay their debts. We put it back into the fund so that we can allocate it out in new loans. So at any one point in time, that fund balance changes. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Do you have any, any opinion as to uh, uh, expenditures for capital projects, streets, infrastructure, sewers, and that, that the self-imposed limits we place on borrowing for those projects every year, uh, long-term, Well, at some, at some point, uh, there's going to be need for a, a much bigger capital infusion to uh, improve the streets. I think the answer to that is yes. We're probably going to have to put a bigger capital infusion in. One of the good things we've done in the last three years, our total debt, which is just the principal piece, was roughly $64 million. As you can see, through the end of 12, we're at 44. So. We've done a great steward's job of reducing the debt burden on the city. We have the capacity to borrow up to 80 some, $85 million if we so choose. But again, we have to have the ability to pay that. And in order to pay that, we have to put the tax burden on the taxpayers. Or else we have to cut money from general fund, from the library, or from transit. Those are the only options we have. So if we don't want to pass that, that debt burden on, but at some point, you know, my goal uh, throughout this was to see the city with a total net debt just for principal of just a little less than $30 million, which gives it a lot of opportunity to do other things and borrow some money, probably at favorable rates. We're probably two years away from that, but it's still at the council's discretion, if they so choose, uh, to say we wanted to borrow $2 million to do road projects in addition to the $2.5 million dollars we're going to borrow for other projects next year or in 15 and 16. They can do that. And we do have the capacity as a city. But again, if we believe that the general fund is at a, a balance that we feel is minimally maintaining services, <clears throat> we feel that we're going to continue support to the library at the current level, and we're going to support transit <coughs> at the minimum level we do, the only way we can do that is to pass it on to our constituents. Just maybe kind of a final question. If it's pretty new, but there's this $111 million in property tax relief. Um, do you know how that's going to work just from a procedure? I, I was trying to figure out in my mind, will the state then? I think it's going to work like the lottery credit, you get so much off. Um, part of the school credit, there's a school credit and a lottery credit, so it'll be part of the school credit as a deduct okay. from the rate. 
but the city is not going to lose money as a result of this. No. Will the school district? No. No, they're just going to fund that through the, the surplus, the alleged Correct. surplus. Okay. Correct. Jim, thanks very much for that presentation. Mark. I'm not clear on the term here, capital outlay. What, what does that encompass? We borrow money to fund projects, okay. and we lay out the capital to do it. That's what it means. Anything else? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.